If there's a happening place in the world today, it's right here in Groningen in the Netherlands where we are doing a really interesting review of some hot, hot new companies that are doing great things in the music tech space, the tech music space. And right now we're pleased to bring to the boomer stage here at Eurosonic, Neil Harrison. Neil, who is originally from Newcastle, but spent 10 years in Dubai while he was there in the desert, dreamed up an interesting thing. Neil, tell us about First Stage, your company. Thank you, Ralph. Um, so First Stage is really a way to get more money into artists' pockets. Really, that's ultimately what we're trying to do. And our philosophy... So you mean not robbing a bank, but doing something <laughs> using tech We're trying to keep music. them out of the jails right. and yeah, on the is. streets playing right. music without robbing banks. Very good. Um, and the way we're doing that is we're actually recording them playing live in the studio, but against green screen, so they can play augmented gigs across the world. So just explain what you mean by augmented gigs. Okay, so augmented reality is, is basically, it's where you film something, um, in, in our case it's video, but it can be graphics as well, and it's placed within your environment. Right. Okay, so it feels like it's actually there in front of you. Right. Um, in our case, we're using a music app, which you can access through your mobile phone, and when you point it at different stages that we can activate, then you can see different Are gigs. we going to be able to show the audience that's watching this and listening to this how it works, or is there a way that we might be able to at least uh, talk through what it is? I can talk you through it. Okay, great. And, and, and hopefully you can understand it. If I lose you at any point, please just, just so stop. So you and your partner, Keith, Yes. came up with this idea when the two of you were working in Dubai. Yes. You were working in the advertising industry but playing music yes. when you weren't working and then realizing that this could be a terrific way of broadening the reach of a band, a musician, songs, whatever. Exactly, yes. I mean, musicians have to earn money to continue to write music and play music. Exactly. Okay. And at the moment, um, as the value of their music is kind of eroding over time, what music fans are actually, uh, we're seeing this in revenue, they want live experiences. Right. So we came up with an idea, and technology is merely a, a way of, it's an enabler in this case, right. to allow music fans across the world, so I could be a band based in Groningen, okay, I play, but I can only play a limited amount of gigs, okay? Right. Therefore, my audience is limited. Right. Through First Stage, they can record a performance and then they can be amplified over millions of gigs across the world. Just explain to me how that would actually work. Okay. What is the technology that is driving it? How, how will this actually manifest? Okay, so step by step, we get a top artist first, and this is important because our philosophy is about artists helping artists. So give us an example of who you've got as a top okay, artist. Okay, so for example, in October for um, music for Ireland and First Music Contact there, they have an emerging artist showcase called Hardware and Class Heroes. Right. Um, we had a band, an established band there called The Galaxy. Right. They picked seven artists out of the hundred artists that were playing the festival, and then we recorded them in the studio. Okay, it's a live, exclusive performance against green screen. Okay, we film that. Okay, and what we then do is we cut out the artists in video against the green screen we can use that video footage and place that within the app so then people can access those performances through the augmented technology that we have. Right. And how long has it taken you to evolve this idea, this platform, and uh, where are you making the app uh, downloadable or available from for punters to get on their phones? So we've been working on this for, for two years now. Uh -huh two long years, but it's been great, you know, we've really enjoyed the process of trying to make something that really will be useful, can make a difference, because ultimately it's about the, the artist, like I said, but it's also about the music fan being able to, to use something and really experience the live, raw performances that artists have to offer right. in front of them, in their hands, okay? At the moment, you can download this on the App Store. You can also download it. Um, it's, it's on Apple, it's also on Android. Android. Yeah, you could, so it's... It's, it's both, you can use it. Um, and yeah, it's, it's, we're, we're having great success. Getting, How do you measure the success? Well, ultimately, we're judging it by the money. Okay, so in terms of what we can put into artists' pockets, right? we're, we're, we're having great conversations with the likes uh, of big beer brands across the world that can sustain this platform for artists to allow them to tour virtually. 
and that is, you know, that really is important in terms of, uh, at the moment, no one's really making a difference for the artist when it comes to the end of the day, when they look in their pockets, you know, there's always a catch, there's always, they have to pay something, we're not charging the artist anything to be part of this, they're picked by an established artist, they don't pay a thing, we record the performances and then they're amplified out and they have the opportunities to make more money. So I was just looking at something that you've got here. Let's show this to the camera there. Let's see if we can get them to see it. With uh, some bands, yep. we've got uh, ba uh, Baskerville. Yes. They're Who are great from band. where? Um, Baskerville are from, are from Dublin. Buffalo Woman? No, uh, Buffalo Woman. Most of these artists are from, from Dublin. Uh, yeah. That We recorded them in Dublin in uh, Windmill Lynn Studios. Um, these are seven artists, uh, like I said, showcased at the Hard Work and Class Heroes Festival. And um, you can access them through our app. So at the moment, if you download the app, um, and... So each of these bands, artists, have got the app in place that you could go and find one of these bands and see an augmented yes, yeah. performance by them. Exactly, yeah. We've activated at the festival Eurosonic this weekend, we've activated Music from Ireland's flyer. Oh, great. So you can actually watch the performances on the flyer. Let's show this to the camera. Yeah. So you download the app, you get the flyer. Very good. Um, you can access it through one of our first stage flyers as well. Okay, so um, how, did you, how do you guys get paid for what you do? Well, at the moment... What's the business model? Uh, business model is beans on toast. Uh, <laughs> it's, well, the business model is, first of all, is getting brands involved. So brands want to be part of music events, like Eurosonic, you know? Brands want to be part of it. They want to reach out to consumers. They want to um, be able to help artists as well. And that's great because, you know, by having more virtual festivals, they have the opportunity to do that. And how do you canvas the bands? How do bands outside of... Dublin and outside of here find out about what first stage is so that they too can participate? So we have a website, it's firststage.com. Right. Uh, artists can go to the website there. But what we're doing this weekend, the reason why we're here is to have conversations with different music export offices from across Europe and hopefully take oh, this. Oh, good idea. Well, the benefit of first stage is allowing this skill, this ability to perform in places that you couldn't before perform. So. Um, we're talking to th these different export offices, and um, hopefully, at the end of two th 2016, we're going to have a global augmented music event, which will allow artists to play across the world to millions of people, and fingers crossed, earn some money doing it. So a lot of people, when they hear the word augmented, think of Oculus Rift, yes. and they think of the VR experience, mm. but basically what you're saying here in this form is that you're augmenting the reach of these bands such that the fan can be from Brazil to Britain, from uh, from Zambia to Albania, and people can access a band, hear about it, and spread the word on that particular act. So let me just explain quickly the difference between augmented reality and virtual reality. Virtual reality is when you are put into your own world. You, ha you put on the goggles, and then it's literally everything is virtual. Okay? Augmented reality is when you place an object that's been either created through graphics or video, but it's put into your existing environment. Right. And that's what's great about augmented reality, because you don't have to disconnect from your current, your current environment um, to view the content. That's why commercially, it's great for brands. I don't have to go home if I've got my Oculus Rift goggles and put them on to experience something. I can access this through my mobile phone or soon to be wearable tech that's been developed by certain hard. Uh, so let's say, for example, companies. I'm a beer company from Europe, yes, and I'm looking for an interesting way to get cool, new, young people participating uh, yeah. in the way that, say, a Red Bull have developed a whole media audience, a whole construct around yeah. them. Um, this is something that you help the bands get introduced to brands. So this is almost like a brand band augmentation. Exactly. So we do all the work for the bands. Um, and also the music export offices, so they don't have to. That's our job. I mean, our, our backgrounds, Keith and I's background is advertising. We've worked with brands for 20 years. We understand uh, how brands want to interact with their audiences, and we help them do that. We have those conversations. We put in place, we allow them to be part of the stage and see how it can work for them. Great, so we're just about out of time, but just before we go, to get in touch with you, to find out about this, 
who should people go to on the web? On what, the web? What's the address they should they can go, go to? They can go to firststage.com. Firststage.com. Yes. Great, cool. Neil, Thank thanks for coming in. Thank Neil Harrison, well. well done. Cheers. Good luck in uh, Ireland, and thanks for coming to Eurosonic in Groningen. Thank you very much.